Well, I got me a new toy, but it looks pretty beat up on the outside, so I was hoping that it's not too damaged, even though I bought it from Amazon in, uh, as they describe, acceptable condition. I'll tell you what, this box yeah, might, might be hiding the real deal here so I'm gonna open it up take the generator out and we'll see what we got Funnel's crushed a little bit. Alright, so we got a pair of wheels, a wrench. Alright, and there are the accessories. Overall, Looks to be in pretty decent shape. They said there was some damage somewhere, but uh, let me redo this filter. It looks like it's been popped loose during shipping. Got this from the Amazon warehouse. I was curious. Okay, that's back secure. All right. Let's see. So we got the two handles. We got the mounts for the bottom. Which I believe. Probably work on this a little bit off camera and uh, let's see. What I might do is flip this thing around so you can see the front. Okay, so there's the front of it. All right, the ground is not connected, which is actually normal so it doesn't kill the battery or cause a short or anything like that during shipping so but yeah I'm gonna do a little bit of a assembling okay yep I see one issue right now motor mount. I read about that in some of the other reviews. That yeah, motor mount is broke. I mean it can still be used but wow that's not good. The only way to fix that is replace the whole um, casting there which looks to be made of aluminum. I see there's a dent in the muffler. Not a big deal. Okay. okay, this looks like the propane connection hose here. Not to cut. 
cut the zip tie that's holding it in place. Yeah, it's got the regulator and everything with it. That's what I really bought this for was for the propane connection. Yep, I'm gonna need two hands here. This is the connection for the propane. That's good, so you don't have to go searching for a, a fitting. And it comes with the wrench to tighten it up. Well, actually it does not. It's got a 13 to 15 millimeter, but not big enough to tighten that connection down. One thing looks like is missing is the axle for the for the wheels. We've got two handles. But yeah, I don't have an axle. 240 120 switch feels like it's in good condition. Main breaker is on off Okay, well, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, assembling on this thing. I may have to search for an axle, but uh, overall though, I mean, yeah, it's, that's the major issue right there. It's got a broke motor mount, but I mean, I think I can still use it. It's probably just going to make some, a little bit more noise because it's one of those sound absorbing shock type motor mounts so all right let me do a little bit of work off camera and we'll be right back this happened during shipping this is broke probably why I got a dent in the muffler there this is dented a little bit, but I mean, no big deal. I mean, overall, I mean, it's not too bad looking. Yeah, it's had a rough ride. Okay, so it's got a pull start as a backup. I thought it did. But it's also got an electric start. Yeah, push button start, however you want to call it. So, all right. Well, I'm gonna to have to order another wheel kit. Can't just find the axle that's missing. So that'll come at a later date. But in the meantime, I can still go ahead and probably start this or get it prepped up. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some oil. This takes about 20 ounces. And of course, they don't make it easy to get to the oil dipstick. So yeah, it doesn't come with any oil in it. funnel was damaged so I'm using my own here.
with synthetic oil. <clears throat> a couple people in the reviews recommended that, which is actually not a bad idea. Okay, we'll see where our level is at. oil in there now. <clears throat> it says you'll know the crankcase is full of oil when the oil level has reached the lower lip of the opening you just boiled, poured the oil into. So it's definitely there. So All right, so we got that done. All right, so next I'll go ahead and connect up the negative terminal. Now I think we're ready to hook up the propane tank. And we should be ready to start. Turn the main breaker on. position. Wish I had the axle so I could put the wheels on, but yeah, even with the damage on the motor mount there, it still runs good. Alright, so I'm doing a little bit of work on this while I wait for my wheel kit. So what I've decided to do, I'm just going to remove that motor mount. That's broke because the screw is digging into the casing there and it's basically not doing any good. I might try to rig something up underneath it for support, but I mean, obviously the motor mount is useless being broke. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to do is go ahead and get that out of the way. Yeah, unless you can weld aluminum, this thing's pretty much worthless now. For those that decide to keep their generator after it's been damaged like this, you can actually make a makeshift modification and use the broken uh, mount for a new base. When uh, basically, let's get it propped up, get it lined up with one of the holes. Of course. Unless you got a screw small enough, I'm going to actually drill this out a little bit so it'll fit a bigger bolt. I can just run the bolt through with a nut and it'll have at least some support underneath.
Okay. That should suffice for support. I mean, yeah, it's probably going to make a bit of a rattling noise, but at least you've got some sort of support in there now. And this is galvanized steel, so the aluminum is probably going to wear out around the bolt head. So that should suffice for what I need it for, for emergency use only. Alright, well, I've contacted Duramax, got my warranty going on, and they're also going to send me a replacement axle. But in the meantime, I've got my generator bolted to a 4x4 and used some C-clamps for a conduit to kind of secure it to my hand truck here, and so it doesn't vibrate off. I have also got a new toy here. This is very nice. This is four, basically 110, 120 volt outlets that will hook up to your generator on the 30 amp circular plug. And this is the end of it here. So it basically can only go in one way, like so, and twist it in place so it doesn't come out. And then this is the uh, the adapter for hooking up up to four appliances or four tools, whatever you want to use. So in the meantime, I'm just going to let that sit on top here. And I've got my cords run for all five appliances that I want to see will, if it will run on this generator. So I'll go ahead and show you each one. Alright, first up is my new fridge that I bought last year. 10 year warranty, Samsung. And don't really have a whole lot of stuff in it, except in the freezer. And it's pretty loaded with stuff. So I've got one plug run for it from my building into my building here. Next up is my other fridge that I have in the building. Freezer and all that. It's you know not real packed, but if I desperately needed to, I could probably combine this fridge with the other fridge and uh, be able to you know, free up one plug if I need to. So I've got a plug run for it. Next up is my giant 20 cubic foot commercial freezer. This has mostly bread, some vegetables, some meat. But temperature is 10 degrees, so it's keeping good temperature outside. Yeah, and I got a plug run for it. It'll go it'll power this freezer. Alright, and this is my seven cubic foot chest freezer. It's loaded. This is probably one of the most important ones that I want to definitely keep running if we have power and a power outage. Last but not least, the main fridge and freezer in the kitchen. And we've got a lot of you know, frozen stuff in here and all that, so my cords run for this one. And then the cord is already run for the chest freezer. So we'll go ahead and fire up the generator and we'll plug these up one by one before connecting them to the generator itself. All right. We're ready to fire it up.
fridge. Now on an extension cord, it is now unplugged. We'll get to the next one here. I'm gonna do these quick because we're in the middle of summer. Lower 90 degree temperatures here. Okay. That one's unplugged. Plugged into that receptacle. Generator's still running. Okay. Stand up freezer. one one by one up excellent now we'll go check the other fridge and freezer in the house Good. And the main fridge. Awesome. Well, that's a good test there. All five appliances are working. So that answers that question. Can this generator handle? Three refrigerators and two freezers? Yes, it can. Excellent. Now I'm going to go hook everything back up to normal and we'll shut it down. Sweet. All right. That was a good 
good test. So, yeah, this generator can definitely handle three full-size refrigerators and two full-size freezers, basically. So, all running on propane, not a single bit of gas. So, this is great. I love this propane option. I've got an extra propane tank in my grill over there if I ever need it. But you never know, I may just get a third one just to have on hand. And if you're switching in between, you can actually put yeah, E087 uh, gas in the tank to switch over to fuel to keep it running while you switch propane tanks. So, really nice option. Really pretty, pretty awesome generator to be honest. I handle three major or five major appliances like that. So, that wraps up my review of a Duramax. XP 4850EH minus the wheels but they'll be here once I get the axle I'll put them on and we'll be good to go so hope you enjoyed it hope it helps you until next time adios